I, I can hear a little bit of some background noise. I'm yeah. Sometimes it's a setting on the computer or the microphone. Yeah. No. M M Megan, if you're talking, we can't hear you. I don't know if you're saying something to us or. My husband is teaching behind me and I can't move where my computer is. Okay. Or I, uh, uh, he's trying to be quiet. <laughs> yeah, we can do it. We, we can do it. So just mute for now. All right. All right. Well, it is that magical hour right now. So I'm going to go ahead and start the meeting. Thank you, everybody, for signing on. And I'm so excited. We've got a, a great group of, of folks. And I wanted to welcome our, our guests. So Hello, our, our new guest. And also just FYI, this is our, our applause signal since it's a sign language of applauding since sometimes we're muted and we're not muted. Uh, but I would love to hear from our guest and just introduce yourself and, and let us know how you heard about us. Uh, maybe uh, Lynn, if you can introduce yourself, that'd be fantastic. I'm Lynn and I've been to this meeting before and I'm, I'm Angel's friend, and she wondered if I could join today and uh, watch everything. And I said, I would love to. I'm just working. Thank you so much. We, we're, we love to have people join us. So, so thank you for coming. And please, uh, let's see, Myra. Hi, Myra. If you can introduce yourself and tell us how you found us, and that'd be great. Hello, everyone. My name is Myra. Um, I have actually struggled with public speaking for many years, and a couple people told me to try Toastmasters, so I just found you guys online, and I am fit my schedule. I was like, oh, Fridays at noon would work, so I'm here. Wonderful. Great <laughs> to have you, and with those goals, I can guarantee you that we can help you at Toastmasters. <laughs> and really the, the best way, the best way to reap the most amount of benefits from Toastmasters is to be active, is to just jump right in and be as active as you can. We've got folks like Angelus and Kathy, they came here one meeting, the next meeting they started getting active in roles. So it's just a really good way to get yourself immersed and improved. Welcome. Okay, thank and, you. Uh, you bet. And let's see, Jamie. Unmute yourself and tell us how you found us. Hi, I am a Toastmaster at uh, Silicon Forest in Port Beaverton, Portland. I used to live in San Diego and I really miss it. I thought I'd take the opportunity to find out how his job market is like, maybe hear about how things are down there. Wonderful. Maybe you might come back then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, always nice to have a fellow Toastmaster, so thank you for, for uh, popping in. And with that, I am going to have our Toastmaster take over. So if you can all help me welcome Lucille. Thank you, Deanna. Welcome, everybody. I am so excited. We have such wonderful meeting today and we also have about right now 19 people that is so great thank you so much for joining us this is front row seat for everybody isn't that wonderful yes mm -hmm. no traffic too yay yeah. we're on time <laughs> our word for our theme for today oh. is philosophy and the word of the day is truism and i put that in the chat for everybody to see but what that means is it is a noun and it means a statement that is obviously true. We will use that word of the day later in part of our meeting during the table topics, which will be conducted by Paul Barsh. For now, I would like to introduce the functionaries for today. At first, I'd like to hear from our counter, and that would be Angelus. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Thank you, Lucille. I will be the off counter. I will be um, noting the overuse of words and noting if um, whoever says us, ums, ers, you knows, and repeated words. words. Great. Thank you, Angela. <laughs> And our grammarian for today is Megan. Megan, would you tell us what the grammarian does? Unmute yourself, Megan. Okay, yes. Thank you, Lucille. The grammarian will listen for outstanding uses of the English language or incorrect uses of the English language. And I will hold up the word of the day until you, until you say it <laughs> in your, and then I'll put it down in the table topics. So if you see it, say it. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Megan. Our timer for today, very important function as well, is Stacy uh, Smith Bacon. Please tell us what is the timer. Okay, what I do is I will time the speakers, the table topics, and the evaluators. And when I time the table topics, you qualify at 45 seconds, and then I turn the screen green. Then at 1 minute 15, I turn it yellow as a warning, and then at uh, 1.30, it turns red. And that means you're near the end, you got 10 seconds as a, a grace. So when the speakers speak, I will, um, if their speech is five to seven minutes, I will time it starting with green at five minutes and six minutes to yellow and red is um, at seven minutes. And they have, I think, a half, an, half a minute grace period. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Mm -hmm. The next one. It is an important role as well. Our general evaluator is Anita Bennett. Anita, would you tell us what the evaluator does? Yes, thank you, Lucille. It's so nice to see everybody. I will be watching the entire meeting and just kind of give a report at the end about the flow and uh, that sort of thing. I will also introduce the evaluators for the two speakers. Thank you. First, before I move on to the next one, I'd like to bring back our president, Deanna. We have a very important guest with us today, Deanna. Thank you, Lucille. Sorry to, to interrupt, but I forgot to introduce our honorable guest today, and that is our area director, Diane Abrams. So please, can you help me welcome Diane? And Diane, if you have any words before Lucille continues with today's meeting, that'd be great. Oh, thank you so much, Deanna and Lucille and the rest of you. I love this club, Expressions Unlimited. You guys are so much fun. Every time I'm here, I just feel this positive energy and it's just a fun group and you're smart. I love the word of the day. It's all good. And it's I'm uh, just here observing, this is an official visit, that's okay. Um, you guys are doing great, everything about this club, exceptional. You turned in your officer list on time. You've had, you had seven out of seven officers trained, and I know you're going to have a speech contest soon, and you're right on track, and uh, you just really have an exceptional president here, Deanna. So thank you very much, and I look forward to a fun meeting. Thank you, Diane. So glad to have you. And with that, turning the baton back to you, Lucille. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you, Diane. That's nice, Deanna, Diane, woo. <laughs> Before I turn, uh, I ask our, our, sorry, joke master, Kathy, I'd like you all to turn your microphone on because we want to hear the laughter and the chuckles and all of that stuff when the joke is being given or afterwards, okay? so. Just for this moment, turn your microphone on and let's bring our joke master for today, Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> you can actually clap. 
Yay. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Kathy Everhart, and I welcome you all. I've got a cute little story to tell you. There was this couple, man and wife. They had a little tiff going on, you know, in the morning. And they said, well, well let's go take a, um, a ride to, uh, you know, up to Julian and get some of that apple pie. And, you know, it was real quiet. They're driving along in the car and that nothing's been said. And all of a sudden they come to some like uh, pasture and there's some cows and some pigs and some horses. And it's like, so the husband, you know, says, hey, does that remind you of some of your relatives? Goes, oh, yes. You're my in-laws. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> very nice. Thank you, Kathy. So now if you can mute yourself because I'm we're going now to sorry. I did not need to unmute mute myself. I'm speaking. We are now going to the portion of our meeting, which are the prepared speeches. And our first speaker is working on pathway, a collaboration path level three, elective number two. The title of her speech, the highlight of my pandemic journey. It will be five to seven minutes for our timer. The objectives, the purpose of this project is for the member to practice writing a speech with an emphasis on adding language to increase interest and impact. Please help me welcome our first speaker for today, Deanna Dovet. Thank you, everybody. The highlight of my pandemic journey are the lessons that I learned from gardening. I've been living in Oceanside for about five years now, and I have a bigger yard, but I really haven't done too much with it. I planted some fruit trees and some herbs, but really haven't done so much. But of course, with COVID, I've been able to spend more time. And my husband actually built these pretty good sized raised garden beds. They're about four feet by five feet. We had to fill them. We actually drove to a place called Eastman Soil in San Marcos, and we got two truckloads full of organic soil. And then we went to a mushroom farm and got mushroom compost put that also in the in the raised garden bins so my all i'm all ready and excited to start growing my produce and i if i were to put them all together what i learned from this pandemic i would call them the three p's one is pests as soon as i started growing my fruits and vegetables, the pests started coming in. And they ranged from little tiny little ants all the way to bigger things. And I'm not quite sure what they are, but I know that they're leaving marks on my fruit. It could be as big as maybe a squirrel or a possum. But the, the ants, ants were just all over my, my yard. And I couldn't figure out how to get rid of them. I tried all different kinds of remedies. And the one thing that I found that was very effective is something called Tangle Foot. Tangle Foot comes in a tub. You can buy it at either Home Depot or Lowe's. And it's a thick brown molasses. Kind of like honey and just very thick. And what you do is use it as a barrier. So I was able to put this around my fruit trees and you can't put it directly on the fruit tree stalk because then it would ruin the tree. So you actually have to put a layer of cotton on the outside and then you have to wrap it with duct tape so that it's tight. And then you put the tangle foot molasses on the outside and that prevents the ants from going in. That worked wonderfully. But then you've got Birds, right? I love birds, but when I've got fruit, I want the birds to eat other things. They can eat insects, they can eat worms, but please don't eat my fruit. With the birds, I thought about using maybe a, a net around the tree, but then I did some research and found out that 
the birds, if they throw their fly inside, they can get injured. And I didn't want that to happen. So I found something called era tape. Not era tape, but era tape. And what it is is an iridescent ribbon. And it's the iridescent, kind of like a holographic ribbon. And when it's moving in the wind, it's whipping, kind of like the sound of a kite whipping in the wind. And I think with the movement and with the sound and with the 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 iridescence of the ribbon that helps to prevent the birds from eating my mulberries and preventing them from eating my figs. So that I found was helpful. The other bigger, bigger types of, of pests, and I'm guessing it's an opossum because they leave the scratch marks on my figs. What I discovered that was helpful are mesh bags. And these mesh bags, if you can imagine, the screen windows, you know, that, that mesh, it's very similar to that, but it's more, uh, more pliable. So it's in a bag form. And then on top is a string. So you can cinch these bags around the fruit as they're ripening, and that would prevent the pest from, at from attacking it. It still allows the fruit to breathe, and you can still see the fruit as it's ripening. That was, so that's the first P is the pest. The second P is, pollinating. I know about the birds and the bees, but I never really quite understood about how they worked. And I have a cherimoya tree. I don't know, I can't see all of you, but usually there are people out there that have not eaten cherimoya. And cherimoya is a fruit, it's a green fruit with a green skin on the outside. Inside is kind of a creamy, white color meat and it's a little bit on the grainy side so it kind of like a pear consistency but mixed with avocado creaminess very sweet and very tasty and i bought this tree that has cherimoya grafted with an atamoya tree so i figured hey i shouldn't have any problems with pollination i should be able to have fruit but last year i only had one fruit out of this seven foot tall tree and then the year before, I only had one fruit. So here I am being frustrated because I see all these flowers, but I don't see any fruit. I Googled and asked, why am I not receiving, why am I not getting any, any fruits? And it turns out that the flower of this cherimoya is both male and female. When it's ready to open up, it'll become a female flower for 24 hours. And then as it starts to open up further, it turns into a male flower for about an hour to an hour and a half. So you have to get the pollen from the male and then put it on the female flower at the right time. Oh my goodness. But it actually worked. So I am right now enjoying looking at about, uh, I'd say about 20, 20 fruits that are growing. Much better than one. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. The third P is, can anybody guess what that is? I'm not gonna be able to hear anybody, but I, I can't see you. So I'm gonna tell you what that third P is. That third P is patience. I have learned quite a lot of patience in my garden. I don't have any magic beans, so I can't put magic beans in the ground and have it shoot up in the Air, air and go up into the clouds. So instead, I have to patiently wait for my fruits and vegetables. I have to look at it every day and make sure that they have enough water, not too much water. And then I have to make sure that the scorching sun doesn't burn the leaves. I look at the leaves every day to see if there's any worm eggs on there. If there's a worm egg, if there's a worm egg, I'll Lick it right off so I don't have to deal with picking big gigantic worms later on. And then I have to look underneath the leaves too because there's a bunch of little insects under there. Very, very much a lot of patience that is, is, is involved. And I've learned the patience. I'm slow, I'm still learning, but through the process of learning, being patient, I am learning to relax more.
and I don't see the timer. So I forgot to pin you, I'm sorry. I will just say that I would love to hear the highlights of all of your pandemic journey. That would be really interesting. If you do have a garden, I hope that you are able to conquer those pests. I hope that you're able to pollinate successfully so that you can enjoy the plethora of your produce. And I hope that you gain a lot of patience and are able to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Thank you. Thank you, Deanna. Please um, write your evaluation for Deanna on the chat, or you can email it to her as well. So I'll ask Deanna to put her email address on the chat so you can email it to her later, or you can chat it, give uh, evaluation to her right now, uh, privately to her in the chat. Please, uh, have one minute, please. I'll just time myself. Okay, our next speaker is working on Pathway Presentation Mastery Level 3. The title of her speech, <clears throat> sorry, My Business Mentor, it will be five to seven minutes. Her objectives is to talk on aspects of her experience as a protege sometime in her life. Please help me welcome Jesse Kiko. Jesse, unmute yourself. Thank you. All right. I just was starting out to say most of you know that I was involved in a company called Excelsis Technologies back in 1998 with my then husband. And he, he was an integral part of that company, as you all know. I think I've talked about him several times. But the thing you don't know is that I had a mentor during the first two years of that time period from 1998 to 2001 when we sold the company. And his name was Richard Forsyth. And he was our corporate lawyer. And the thing is about Richard, he went over and above the call of duty that a corporate lawyer would normally make. And he embodied all the qualities that I see in a mentor. He had guidance, patience, um, encouragement, coaching. And the thing is that Rich, one of the things that Richard didn't do was he didn't do too much. He let us have our own experience of building the company and let us do it in our own way. And that meant a lot. And, you know, one of the, the, the thing that I've learned in life is I can learn things fastest and best when I have to do it myself. He taught me independence and self-reliance. He taught me a great work ethic. He taught me what really dedication looks like and feels like, perseverance and patience. And he taught me how to trust my own business intuition. And one of the things he did that was integral to the whole company was he taught me how to keep my cool even in the midst of being around someone or people who may not have my best interests at heart 
And I'll give you a little story about that in a minute. But perhaps the most valuable thing that Richard taught me, and this was by his own example, and that was how to really care, how to care for another human being. And the way he did that was he took an extra interest in what was important to me. And one of the things that was important to me then and still is today was my daughter. And she was a grade school student at the time. This was 20 years ago. And he would ask every so often, he would ask, how's Melanie doing? What, wh how was her last performance? What play is coming up next? And things like that. And it really meant a lot to me. Another way that he, he showed that he cared would be, if Fred and I had been up late the night before working and sending out emails, he might mention the next day, oh, I see you were up late last night. I saw the 1, 1 a.m. stamp on the, on the email. And these were just forms of praise that we probably weren't gonna get anywhere else. He would also encourage us to take a vacation once in a while. So these small things, these small details can show how big and how much somebody really cares. He also knew the difference between Fred and I, uh, because he cared not only about me and Fred, but he also cared about the company as a whole, as a whole because we had a lot of employees later on and a, and a lot of investors. And one day when before we were very big, we were still in the basement of our house actually, and Fred came to me and said, we're gonna to have to start paying ourselves a salary. Richard says that labor law is really gonna come down to us, down on us if we don't start paying ourselves. And Richard knew that I wouldn't have a problem with taking a salary, but Fred was the one that really wanted to conserve cash and increase equity. So Richard had that finesse and he knew how to, to make it work. Um, and a little later, when we were in a nicer, bigger, fancier office, and the company had, had become a bit more successful. We had a CEO and one of the major, major turning points that happened, and this is the story that I was gonna tell you. The CEO called me into his office and we chatted a little while. And on the way out, I stopped and he said, you know, he said, I think it's time for you to step down from the board of directors. And I said, oh really? I said, well, let me talk over with Fred that topic and I'll get back to you. Well, I went to my office, excuse me, I shut the door and I picked up the phone and I called Richard. And um, I'll never forget, I, I mean, I can't disclose exactly turning client privilege what exactly he said, but my interpretation of what he said was, I would not get off the board. You do what you want, it's your company, but I would recommend keeping a finger on the pulse of what's going on with the business. And the thing is, that was a turning point because within the next uh, within the next 12 months or so, we had to let that CEO go. And in order to get that done, we needed to bring in an outside, a different corporate, a different lawyer to sort of clandestinely get that accomplished. And in that process, in that negotiation, they wanted to be the new corporate lawyers for us. So I lost my Richard, I lost my mentor, but I was so grateful for everything that I had learned from him and within 12 months the company was sold. I say this because, oh, I wanted to let you know too that because of this assignment of the speech, I actually looked up Richard and I was successful and I, <clears throat> I just talked to him yesterday. And we hadn't spoken in 20 years. And he was so happy to get to say hello to me. And I got to thank him for being my mentor. And we had a, a few laughs and it was just a great moment. So in closing, I, will, I wanna ask you, who has mentored you? And how can you pay it forward? Because mentoring is one of the most rewarding experiences that one can have. And it can make a huge difference in someone's life just by taking a day or an hour or even a minute and, and encourage someone with a little guidance and encouragement. There may even be someone in your life who looks up to you that you may not even be aware of. And you never know how much a small detail can mean a great deal to someone like that.
So please, I encourage you to continue to look for ways to help out others and pay it forward. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Please take one minute to send your evaluation to Jesse via the chat, or you can also email it to her. Jesse, if you put your email address so people can send it to you, that would be great. Because I don't have it handy. <laughs> <laughs> sure. One minute, please. Okay, I would like to now get a timer's report from our timer. Yes. Yes, thank Deanna, you. <laughs> Deanna couldn't see me as a timer, so she went over, she was eight minutes and 45 seconds, so she was a minute and 45 over. And I liked the, I didn't, I wasn't aware that you could pin one of us, and so that might be a good, thing to know for any future speakers. The second speaker, uh, Jessie, was six minutes and 58 seconds, so she was right in with the time. So um, I don't know, should Miss Toastmaster, should we forgive Deanna for going over or I not? do have the power to do that. I have the power? Okay. <laughs> so for to today, we will forgive Deanna. So please, I'd like you to take your vote now be, because that we don't want to overwhelm our, our, who's our ballot counter. Please send your vote to Devin privately, who is the best speaker that you're gonna pick from. So for best speaker, send your chat to Devin, who will be our ballot counter for the best speaker. While you're doing that, I would like to introduce our general evaluator for today, Annetta Bennett, who will introduce our evaluators. Hello again, good morning. We had two excellent speeches and uh, we've got a couple of talented evaluators ready to uh, let us know what they thought about the speeches. The first evaluator, for, um, for Deanna is Charles. Thank you, Charles. Deanna, your speech, the highlight of your pandemic journey really grew on me. Topic, uh, gardening is something that I feel that a lot of us have gotten into this year that we weren't expecting. <clears throat> your goal was to use descriptive language. I'm going to use the, the sheet and I'll add some content uh, in, yeah, in, your, in the evaluation. The first thing is, is you're always very clear and part of how you are so clear with what you're speaking about is you use a lot of vocal variety. I always appreciate that you really, you know, it vary your language based on things that you're really trying to emphasize. Eye contact, it's always a little weird with being on Zoom and you can't see everyone, so of course that, that's gonna get a thumbs up. You weren't looking off in different directions. Uh, and then the comfort level, that was one of the things that I really appreciated about your speech was using the three Ps. You showed us not only a, a problem, 
but you gave us a solution and how you struggled through that i each each of your p's was really was really great the <clears throat> the one area that i think that is really important especially because we have technology is being able to use visuals and maybe a few more hand gestures or some of the pictures of the fruit would have been really great to see or some of the products that you recommended. In closing, looking at the descriptive language and the liter literary elements, you used a lot of great metaphors, molasses being the solution, so I could just see it pouring over, the holographic ribbon to keep the birds away, uh, the cinch bags, it was very descriptive language. So as a far as a gardener, I will be looking for these products myself and I know what to look at when I go to Lowe's. As always, Deanna, a wonderful speech and thank you for allowing me to evaluate it. Thank you, Charles. Jesse was the second speech and Angel will uh, give her evaluation. Thank you, Anita. I'm excited to give an evaluation for Jesse and Jesse's speech, my business mentor. Now I am very excited about business mentors in general and I've just had one of my own and it was very interesting, Jesse, to hear what you had to say. And I'm gonna cover the notes that I sent her so I have to lean in. What I noticed was your smile and your manner it was really great to listen and to watch you. And your opening I liked as well, because I think giving background and some information is really important. Even if people have heard it before, it's nice to hear and understand the setting. Now, let's see, your speed I liked. I noted about your tone. I saw some gestures that were really good and you looked up as you remembered. And watching your face when you described it all was really super, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Charles mentioned vocal variety, and I think that he's right to comment because it's such an important element, something I'd like to see you working on just a little bit more, making some parts bigger or more enthusiastic, maybe some parts, you know, a little bit more dour. <laughs> I don't want to say the word dour. The other thing is you did what I just did. You made a few asides, and when you made your asides, you were rapidly speaking. So I would try to keep it all a little bit more slow so we don't miss anything. I loved that you were talking about caring. What a brilliant topic. And I was saying in my note to you to have caring at work. How brilliant is that? And you wouldn't see it every day. And on the personal note, I hate to question people in case they think I'm being nosy. Oh, so what happened then and how, and how are they all, you know? But of course, for people to know you're interested, it's absolutely brilliant. And I would have maybe liked you to describe him a little bit so that we could have visualized him as well. And by the same token, I'd also recommend when you're describing or telling a story, bring in the senses a little bit, the smells, the taste, what you heard, how you felt, how you felt. And we could see it, but I would like you to describe it maybe a little bit more. And let's see, what else did I comment? You were just so brilliant. And it warmed my heart that you called him and you thanked him. And I think that touched all of us. I see people nodding. So thank you, thank you very much for that. And especially you had a good conclusion. You called us to action, a really worthwhile action to show people that we care. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. Now we'll hand the meeting back over to Lucille, our Toastmaster. Thank you, Anita. Very good evaluation from both evaluators. Now, let's see. May I have a timers report, please, for the evaluators? Yes, you may. Charles was two minutes and 16 seconds, and Angel was two minutes and 34 seconds. So I think 2.30 is the cutoff with a 10 minute or 10 second grace. Yes. Am I so correct? Both qualify. Yeah. Okay. They both so qualify. Please, yes. So please take your moment and, and send your vote to our ballot counter, Devin. And while you're doing that, 
the portion of this meeting now. Uh, it, my portion is done. I'm going to turn it over to our table topic, Master Paul Barsh. Thank you, Lucille. Hello, everyone. This is the portion of the meeting where we do table topics. If you're not familiar with table topics, it is our impromptu speaking session. And it's an opportunity for you to speak for a minimum of 45 seconds up to, I think, a minute 30. Then after that, you're disqualified. If you can use the word of the day, that would be great. It's preferable. The word of the day is truism. And as Lucille said, it's a noun. It's a statement that everyone agrees with. That almost every, uh, it's obviously true and almost everyone agrees with it. So I'll give you a couple of truisms. Money can't buy happiness. We probably heard that one. Politicians are corrupt. Right, yeah. Time is money. All right. Travel is good for the soul. We mostly agree with that. You get what you pay for. All of those are examples of truism. Now, most time table topics, they can be difficult. Sometimes it can be easy. This particular topic today could be a little challenging. It's on philosophy. I'm gonna ask some questions that might be a little tough. So if you want to answer the question, great. If not, you can settle with, do I like dogs or cats better? You want that one, you just go with that one, but try to answer the question I ask you. So with the word of the day truism, let's start with this first question. Is free will real or is it just an illusion? Is free will real or is it just an illusion? Let's go with Jerry Tettleman. Thank you, Paul, for that uh, provocative question. I will try to extract a truism out of all that. Is, free, is it free will or are we predetermined? I think it's a little of both. There seems to be, uh, free will is obvious that you have a choice to make and you can do things. The part that's not obvious is that there seems to be some kind of fate or destiny that pulls you along or helps you along the course. I think sometimes we have events that happen that help us reach our goal because we've set an intention or you know our life lines up in a certain way. And I think it would be called a truism that there is a destiny, there is a fate. And so I can't say it's one or the other. I think it's a mix of both. We can make choices, but sometimes those choices are to help us find our true path. So I would say we all have a little bit of both going, which would be predeterminism and uh, you know free thought. Thank you. Good job, Jerry. These can be a little bit tough, but I love esoteric stuff. Next question is, is there a meaning to life? And if so, what is it? Is there a meaning to life? And if so, what is it? Mr. Sinclair, I'm dying to hear what you have to say about that. Hmm. Oh, we're digging deep, Mr. Barsh. I was confused on Jerry's last uh, rundown because it left me somewhere between free will and predetermined and I didn't know that the two could coexist and so when the truism of not coming to one side or the other uh, can kind of leave you in a lurch so I always like sitting down and hammering out something kind of maybe a little more agitating than most, but I've had good memories of sitting down with people in, in galleries and art institutes when we hammered out the reality of someone's accomplishment in art or in philosophy, so I found it all very interesting. But I need to ask you again, what, what was your final, your first question, Paul? I, I lost track. Is there meaning to life? And if so, what is it, Mr. Sinclair? Oh boy. No, there's no meaning to life. <laughs> so I'll end with that. All right. I love you, by the way. It's good seeing you again. Oh, good seeing you too. Thank you, Rick. All right. Thank you for that one. So here's the next one. There's, there's 
This one's a little controversial, but it's all fun. You might remember a while ago, there was an artist, and I don't remember the name of the artist, but they had put a crucifix in a jar of urine and had placed it in a, a museum, liked it, and said, hey, that's art. And for a lot of people, they found it very offensive. They're like, wait a minute, a crucifix and a jar, jar of urine, that's not art. So there was a debate of what's art and what's not. My question to you is, where is the line between art and not art? Where is the line between art and not art? Let's see, I'm gonna ask one of our guests if they wanna participate. If you don't, you can just say, no, I don't wanna do that one. Myra, do you wanna try that one? No, all right. <laughs> well, then we're gonna to go to one of our members, our, our new members, I, I believe, Angelus. Where is the line between art and not art? Paul, I thought I, Lynn was racing. Oh. Thank you, Paul. I don't really know much about art, but I mean, nowadays, I think you can, you can consider anything art. I just think that's kind of gross, and I don't know where, I don't know how to use the word truism in this, so this is my, <laughs> side. Um, I've seen many things that has been used for, uh, as art. Um, there's a, and I saw this photo on Facebook where it's a piece of drywall that was punched into, and someone put a frame over it, and said um, a man's weakest point or something like that on it. So, I mean, you could consider that art, I guess, but like I said, you could, and anything can be art. I don't, I don't know why someone would want to use a crucifix with, in, with a pee jar. That's, I think that's just gross, but maybe someone who's not that religious would consider that like offense. I mean, someone who is, that religious would consider that offensive. <laughs> Good job, Angelus. Yeah, these are kind of tough, but I think they're fun. So thanks for telling me, Lucille, that Lynn raised her hand. I'm sorry, I can only see the panel of nine. I'd have to scroll through, so hopefully we'll get to everybody. Next question is, what should be the goal of humanity? Lynn, you raised your hand previously on that one, so I'll ask you, what should be the goal of humanity? Well, could I respond to the question before that first? Sure, why don't you respond to the art and not art, Lynn? Okay, your question was, where is the line between art and not art? And I'm convinced the line exists within each individual, period. Hmm. All right, do you, do you wanna try the next one? What should be the goal of humanity? And it depends on where you are what country you are, what city you are, if you're in outer space, the goal posts move with every action that comes up. I don't believe there's an answer to that, especially these days. All right, thank you, Lynn. This, is a, this next one is, I think, interesting. What does it mean to mean, what does it mean to live a good life? What does it mean to live a good life? Diane. Thank you, Mr. Table Topic Master. What does it mean to live a good life? Just as with all of your other questions, I think the answer is always unique. What does it mean to me to live a good life? Living a good life to me is following my conscience and living within my own value system. At the end of my life, I'm kind of shooting for like 95, 96 to die. And if I look back and say, I lived a good life, what does that mean to me? Is that I loved, I laughed, I, I was true to my values. I cared about people. I had people in my life that I loved and cared about me. I had a job that I enjoyed, I had family and friends, and that would be a good life to me. And I wanna kind of put a little spot in my answer to say that when you asked what's the meaning of life, my answer to that is to express yourself. Whoever you are, 
know who you are, love yourself, and express yourself. If who you are, your unique values, is Toastmasters, then express yourself through Toastmasters. If you play the piano, then play the piano. Who are you? And express yourself. That is what you should do with your life. Mr. Tableton. Thank you, Diane. Awesome. Lucia, we have time for a couple more? Two? Two. Excellent. How would humanity change if all humans' life expectancy was increased by 500 years? So if each one of us lived 500 years, everybody on the planet, how would humanity change if all humans' life expectancy was increased by 500 Hundred years. Let's give that one to Corey Murphy. Thanks, Paul. That's a very interesting question. Uh, I think that if people's life expectancy was increased by 500 years, people would get bored with the simple things. Um, I think after a while, you would see and experience most things that the world has to offer. And I think that people would get bored with it and maybe maybe live a reserved life because of it? I'm not sure. I, I read a book, it's called One Month to Live and How to Approach Life if you only know that you have one month to live. And how people approach that is with vigor and enthusiasm and true truism of you get what you pay for. I, that doesn't make sense, but I was trying to use that word. I think it's really important to, um, to every day wake up and think about how am I going to make this day the best, even if you live one day tomorrow is your last day or you live 500 years from now. I think it's important to really take the time to appreciate what you got and live in the moment and be appreciative. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Corey. Next question is, where does your self-worth come from? Where does your self-worth come from? Mr. Pat Hartley. You're on mute. There you go. Appreciate you going deep with these questions. Sometimes it's uh, easy to take the easy questions I do sometimes as a table topics master. Where do I find my self-worth? That's a good question. I'll try to come up with a truism. I remember I used to write a lot, journal a lot, and trying to find, I, I read a lot of books about, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a seeker trying to find meaning of life or some kind of sense out of this life. And I remember I wrote about what does self-respect mean? What does self-worth mean to me? And um, I think it was just something that's inside you that you, that can't be taken away, that can't be some, you can't get it from a source like ex outside yourself. And it took me a long time to realize that because I was always you know, wanting approval, wanting acceptance, wanting some kind of validation from outside. But it's, it's, it's a personal thing. It's something for each person. I think they have to find their own self-worth. And another thing, it's not that I found that uh, saying, oh, I deserve that is, I used to not want to say that because I didn't think I deserved anything, but it's not that you don't deserve something it's or that you deserve something it's that we're we all are connected we all deserve deserve a you know to feel connected and feel worthy so that's it thank you pat that's my true and that's your truism excellent and with that uh close table topics thanks for indulging me on a very i think interesting talk and i'll turn it back over to lucille thank you paul always interesting table topics from paul so quickly, I'd like to get a timer's report from uh, our table topics. Stacy, please. Okay. I believe the cutoff is one minute, 30 seconds. Am I correct? 
with a 15 minute grace period. A 15 second Second, grace period. (laughs) So everybody was within the right range, the one minute 30 seconds, except Pat, who went over to 156. Okay, so who qualified for the table topics? People. The ones that qualified were Jerry, Rick, Angelus, Lynn, Diane, and Corey. Okay, so Meg, thank you very much, Stacey. Megan, would you please unmute yourself and tell us who used the word of the day for now? Okay, everyone used the word of the day. I wasn't sure if you could use any form of the word truism or everyone used it if you could use uh, every, any okay. form like true. Okay. Thank so. you, Megan. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. All right. So who, the, everybody qualified for using the word of the day and then people qualified as far as time are Pat, Jerry, Rick, Angelus, Lynn, and Corey, Deanna, and, and Corey. So please vote for the best table topics. Speaker, send it to the chat to Devin, please. And while you, you are doing that, I'd like to get a report for the ad counter, Angelus. Please unmute yourself and for the ad. Report. Um, so I didn't really notice many today. Uh, the joke master, Kathy, I noticed one uh and one um. Deanna, one ah, uh, I, I believe. Jesse, one um. And then uh, for table topics, Pat, two uh, us. It's good. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Angelus. And now for the grammarian, Megan, unmute yourself. Tell us who use creative use of words and correct language. Um, I think they all use uh, the correct word. I just found, um, I didn't know if we could use uh, true, any form of truism. I just thought that, you know, Di- Diane said true and I didn't know if um we are trying to use the actual word truism but the same that's just okay and (laughs) (laughs) thank you megan (laughs) and now um i'd like to invite our general evaluator to give us her thoughts on how the meeting went Anita, please. Lucille, the meeting went great. We started on time and uh, just it just flowed wonderfully. And what I like about uh, being the general evaluator is you really look for things. And of course, I saw that Deanna didn't introduce one of our guests and, but things happen, right? And so it just moved forward when she realized it, just picked it up, moved forward, and the meeting moved forward without a glitch. And I love that. And uh, Paul always has the most uh, thought-provoking table topics. And I'm so glad he didn't pick me. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Before I turn over to the president and actually for her to announce the winner i'd like you all to turn on your camera because we're gonna get a screenshot because i'm also the vppr of our club and i need to advertise us to the world so turn your camera on and say hello a big smile so that Devin can screenshot us ready one two three hello Thank you, everybody. Thank you. So now I'm going to turn the meeting back to our president, Deanna, who will also announce the winner. Deanna. I, okay, I don't know who the winner is. So 
who is counting? Devin. Oh, Devin. When, Devin, when you're ready, can you just chime in? You want me to just announce them? Yes, for you? please. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to type it over, but that's why. All right. So we'll start with table topics. So today's winner is Jerry. So congratulations, Jerry. And then for evaluators, it actually was a tie. So congratulations to both Charles and Angel. Well done. And then our speaker of the day goes to Jesse. Congratulations, Jesse. Wonderful. Awesome. Okay, that was a fantastic meeting. And with the essence of time, because we are trying to qualify for meeting excellence award, I am actually going to formally conclude our meeting right now. If that's okay with uh, Diane. Angel. Uh, 